and um, we appreciate them. And I'm going now to call the elders up that were at the conference yesterday and Friday night, and um, feel free to bring Caius. He, he can come, too. And so they're going to talk a little bit about the conference. You've seen posters around. There were others that were there, too. There were actually 13 of us, but we're asking your spiritual leaders to come up. And, and um, Caius, welcome to First Presbyterian <laughs> Church and um, leadership. <laughs> there were other people that went to this conference as well. And so, but I've just asked them because they're your spiritual leaders. And so... We want to hear what they have to say about this conference. It's been um, a wonderful time that we've had this weekend. We, this is what the poster said. Do you want to see God move supernaturally today as in the Bible? Do you want to pray for those who need healing with confidence? Do you want to move from battle to God's breakthrough in your life and relationships? Do you want to integrate family work and discipleship? And so that's what the weekend was about. That's what we talked about. And um, so we discussed what we could do as a church that, um, you know, we come here every week, we hear a sermon, we're filled with Bible knowledge, but the challenge is living out that Bible knowledge, isn't it? And that's kind of where the rubber hits the road. So that's what we talked about, these practical things. And so um, as we listen to the leader of this conference, we learn some things we learn that we have to follow jesus first and but how do we do that and so that's what they're going to talk to you about this morning things that hit them impressions that they had and um we want to continue to lead you well and so here are the thoughts of your leaders now we're going to be led by three questions go ahead and take that the three questions are this what one new thing did you learn and they might just give a little testimony that they heard there. I don't know. They're only, they've only got three minutes, so somebody be timing them, okay? And um, then what might we as a church discover if we tried that? And how might it help us grow in discipleship here as a congregation as we reach out to the community around us if we did that? So we're going to start with Sean Russell. Woohoo! Do you want the other mic? There you go. It's check. Well, maybe. <laughs> okay. What new thing you learned? Um, I, I guess the new thing I learned is just the whole structure of what he was talking about, which we can't really go into detail here because we don't have time. But... Um, in the process of what he was explaining and everything in, in his the, telling his stories as illustrations and, and things something a light clicked on in me again it's not something that I just found out it's something that you we all know but it kind of hit home um, he talked about you know you have to take things to the Lord you have to pray about things and and you know in faith that he's going to help you and um, and I thought well in the stories that he's telling me one of them was about his finances and uh, one of the first things he said was he, he worked and worked and worked on his finances and then he went to his bedroom he laid them all out across his bed so he was like there was a bunch of pa I could imagine a bunch of papers and stuff and I, I was thinking in my head man I bet that took a lot of work <laughs> he spent a lot of time and effort 
doing that. And then he went and prayed. And I thought, and and that kind of was a theme throughout everything that he told us about the work that he put into getting something, wanting something done or needing something done, and then praying about it. And uh, so it just brings home to, to me that it's not blind faith. You're not just, you know, with your closed history book praying, oh, please, Lord, let me pass this test and hope I pass the test. No, you got to put work in, too, and let him help you help yourself. Okay? Um, so that was, and as, as a church, I think if we grasp that and, you know, and use that, it, I just think that that would, you know, as a whole, the sky's the limit as to what we could do. Okay. I'm, my time's up. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Sean. Good job, Sean. So introduce yourself, please. I just introduce Paul, yourself. I'm Paul Griffith. I just wanted to uh, add to what Ginger said that this was a workshop that we went to. That means that we did some working with each other, not just listening and not just praying, but we talked with each other and we prayed for each other and we saw God work in our midst. Uh, we could just about uh, uh, just bring back Ross's children's sermon, I think, to say what we did he 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 must have been there in spirit <laughs> because he talked about praying for the spirit's healing to come to uh, an individual <clears throat> that's one of the things that we did uh, something that i learned i i learned that uh, the activity of the holy spirit in our midst which is what we were really about this weekend is not uh so unfamiliar probably as we would think if we sat and tried to think up examples but he asked uh, how many of you in the audience have had an encounter with an angel and many hands went up I was in intrigued to see that happen uh, so that was the Holy Spirit at work that brought the angel to help us in our need he talked about how this Holy Spirit brings words of guidance to come into our minds he gives us thoughts Sometimes it just seems like things pop into our mind, but in, a lot, in many cases, he says, that's the Holy Spirit bringing those <clears throat> things to mind, things to give guidance, things to help others, and so on. <clears throat> uh, and then he mentioned healing as one of the uh, key aspects of the Holy Spirit's work. He pointed out that Jesus never said no to anyone who asked for healing. Uh, okay, so what can we learn as a church, or what can we do as a church? Well, if we uh, look up and watch and see the Holy Spirit at work around us, I think we'll have more God love for God's people, each other. I think that uh, we would live more as in community, sharing the lives that he's given us with each other. Uh, a lot of the activity that uh, the <clears throat> workshop leader talked about had to do with praying together or talking together and building each other up. So we might learn some more about that. And uh, we, we might also discover that we need to meet in small groups so that we can have enough intimacy to do the kind of fellowship that we're talking about. Put it close to your mouth, please. Um, Jocelyn Lolis. And, uh, of course, as we go along, some of us are going to be repeating the same things. But one of the things that I learned was about this movement. It's called the 3D movement. And it's supernaturally, naturally, um, or naturally, supernaturally. But the gentleman who led it, an English gentleman, was very passionate about this movement. It's not something new. I kind of gathered it's been around for a long time, um, but it seems to be gaining momentum now. And it's about, um, it's about putting um, discipleship and mission back into the hands of, of us, ordinary people, not just, um, not just the leaders or the um, ministers or, or uh, 
pastors of churches, but giving it back to the people. Uh, and so uh, what might we learn as a, we as a church do discover? And, and of course, that leads back to what Ross said this morning about the power of the Holy Spirit. And I think that was the, the primary thing that he was pointing out was how to bring the Holy Spirit back into our lives so we can see how much through prayer we can accomplish. All right, my name is uh, Jeff Thorpe, and um, this is Kaius. He's trying to talk. His, all he's doing is talking. He's not crying, so he's just talking. <laughs> Um, the, the, I'm going I'm to sum it all up, all the three questions up in uh, one basic answer. Uh, the thing that we must remember is that Jesus gave up his deity to come down to be human. And if you remember, every time he broke bread or when he healed, he went to God first. So understand, us are like receivers and transmitters or something that can be transferred through. Um, it's, it's not us, it's God working through us. Uh, when it comes time for healing or even receiving a prophetic word to give to somebody, like if somebody is going through an emotional distress or if they're just going through something and they need prayer, if God wants to give you a prophetic word to speak to them, um, you are able to receive it. You don't have to be special, you don't have to speak in tongues, you don't have to do no seance or nothing special. Just be present and, and relax. We were we were praying uh, heal, We were uh, praying over. Um, we, we were praying over. Um, who's, it was it was you. It was me. It was Ginger. <laughs> we were praying over Ginger. And as we were praying over Ginger, no no no. I'm sorry. It was Jessica. I'm sorry. It was a girl in our group named Jessica. We was praying over. And what it was is I was thinking like, oh my God, I got to stand like this. I got to hold my hands out like this or or whatever, you know, I was thinking, okay, what do I got to do? And God, he, he spoke to me, and he said, relax, stop stressing. <laughs> and basically, Jeff, it ain't you that's going to heal her. I'm going to heal her through you, all right? You pray and let me do the work, and that's what we have to understand. It's God that does the work. Even through Jesus Christ, it was the God that was doing the work, okay? So when healing can happen. Prophetic words can be given. Ross, I know you know about that. Prophetic words can be given. Jason, yes, God will give you something new every time. I mean, my mind was blown. When I, when I went there, I was like, okay, what I'm going to learn. Man, I had to pick up pieces of my brain off the floor. <laughs> because when, when he came through and he preached the word, well, he didn't preach. When he gave the lesson and gave the, the topics and uh, everything, I was like, yes, this is that next level that I've been wanting to go to that I've been talking, thinking about. And the thing about it is, you don't have to be nothing special. You just have to claim that you're God's child and let God work through you. Healing can happen. Prophetic words can happen. Uh, feeling people's pains and, and speaking a word to them from God, it can happen through you. As long as you're present and you're planted in your place with purpose, this will be your purpose. I'm Doug Guthrie. As Jeff was talking about, we can pray for other people, we can get prophecies about other people, and there's a long discussion that he led this with that talks about being in the heavenly realm, which we reach when we actually give ourselves over to God and accept God and his way of doing things. And in that realm, in the heavenly realm, things are invisible. We're led by the Holy Spirit and by the Bible. And we base our thoughts and and acceptance of things based on faith where our, our heavenly existence in our realm we think of things we have to reason it out and this happens because of this in the heavenly realm we can just believe because God said this is the way it is Jesus said that's the way it is and Jeff was talking about the fact that uh, he gives prophetic messages one of the big things he stressed over and over again if you're talking to somebody and you feel like God has given you a message for them, you need to not just say, God told me to tell you this. You need to approach that very delicately and say, does this mean something to you? Because that message may not be from God. It may be something else. So you have to be sure that you don't 
accuse them of something or saying, I'm seeing this about you, but you'd rather approach it more from the standpoint of, does this mean anything to you? I'm getting this message, and does this have anything? Does it, and he talked about times he he'd approached people that way, and suddenly that broke through. And if you, you get a message that's about you, you don't just say, oh, wow, I'm going to go do that. You meet with two or three other people in a small group and discuss it with them because sometimes that message may not be from God. That message may be what you're wanting to hear and what you're, it really is your desire coming through and it's not coming from God. So you discuss it with other people and see what they say. See if they think that could be a message for you that's from God or whether they say, you know, we may better pray about that a lot more before we jump off and do all these things. His, one of his statements with his sense of humor was, if God just told you that you need to go out and buy a, the fanciest BMW and take out a loan to pay for it all, that probably didn't come from God. Uh, that you, so you have to be a little bit discerning. And if you once, uh, when you get into the point of you're really turning yourself over to God, then you become more perceptive and you're more accepting that yes, healing does heal. That it's not just once in a while, a while but it can happen frequently and you start seeing things more as something supernatural rather than trying to go back and think through this and say, well, this happened because of this and this happened, or it couldn't have happened. There's no way that could have happened. You accept things because you understand God can do miracles. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Can we, you can be seated. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. Let's thank them. So I'm going to share a couple of things. Um, it might sound a little confusing to you when he talked about, I mean, he talked a lot about the kingdom of earth in the kingdom of heaven and and we we live here i mean we live in a physical world but the kingdom of heaven is kind of overlaid on the to begin to see it we learn to begin to see it and then you know as christians we can say we're christian but it's really when we start taking our agenda and we give our agenda and we start giving it to the lord and because um if we don't then we're 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 not really knowing what Jesus is about. Jesus went to the cross, and we have to kind of take our agendas to the cross as well. And so we give that to him, and then it's a process of slowly learning that that agenda then becomes his agenda. And then once that agenda, that's the cross, it hurts. It's really hard to do to say, well, you know, I really want this, and, and we're trying to get God to do our agenda but God wants to turn that around and say, well, let's submit that agenda to my agenda, and then if there's joy. Then there's resurrection. It's not a, in the, and so it's a growing process of living, learning to live there with the kingdom of God in this world that then we're blessed and we become a blessing because we're like him. Because we're walking in his ways. We're listening to his voice. And so we, he talked about, the one thing I want to say about healing that he talked about is you notice not everybody is healed. Well, when he started, his church started praying for healing every day for people from 7 to 7.30. Just real simple. If you wanted to come and be prayed for healing. They went seven years and nobody was healed. Seven years. But he said, no, we're going to persist because this is the lifestyle of Jesus. So we're just going to persist because you know something? I don't care how sick you are. If somebody prays for you, you feel better. You feel encouraged, right? Okay, somebody cares. It's like, a, it's like that oil of David, you know, that just they talks about in Psalms, that oil being poured over you to, to just kind of, encourage you and so um but see we need to move from the that's just weird i'm sorry but that's just weird to well maybe i'll actually pray 
and then then as I'm praying then maybe I'll get a little more courage to to keep praying and to realize there's a lot of healing that goes on in the midst of just connecting with God is there anything else you'd like to add or anybody else that went would like you like to add and we'll talk about this over the next few weeks it's time to stop but yes sir I will do that over the next few weeks. Okay. Because we need to um, stop. And um, But I will say the psalm that was read this morning says, meditate on God's wonderful miracles and then share those with the community. Don't you think people in the community need encouragement? Don't you think they need a little faith? Don't you think we need to pray for peace for them? Don't you think we need to bring a blessing to the community? That's what we're all about, right? That's what we try to do. And so that psalm said, Share those awe-inspiring deeds with everyone. When we draw close enough to God in faith to experience them, then we'll say to others, and they will say to us, What's happening here? 